So metformin, what is it and how can we utilize it within bodybuilding? So firstly, metformin is actually a drug which is mainly used and derived for uh, diabetics, okay? So people with insulin sensitivity. So before we delve into how we can apply it to bodybuilding, we'll first just break down how it's used within like medical practices. Um, so it's been around since early as the 1920s, okay? So there's a lot of liter literature on this. There's a lot of data on this. Um, it's used for people with high amounts of insulin resistance or type two diabetes, where essentially that process of transporting carbohydrates into the cells, into the muscle cells, and becomes less efficient as that of someone, you know, who manages sugars much better. Um, and we actually get this down regulation of, uh, um, you know, sensitivity to that insulogenic response from the pancreas. So what do we know about the pancreas? The pancreas actually secretes insulin, okay, when we consume carbohydrates in particular, amongst proteins as well, in order to actually shuttle them and act as a catalyst to take those carbohydrates into the muscle as opposed to circulating the blood, okay, and elevating the blood sugar. So what we see in diabetic patients is that process is not quite as efficient, whether that's a downregulation of the release and secretion of insulin, or whether it's just a resistance built against that release at the beta cells. So metformin was actually created to aid this process for diabetics, for type 2 diabetics. Now, what it does is it actually goes against the secretion of gl glycogen from the liver. So it down-regulates gluconeogenesis. So in that sense, it actually increases the sensitivity to insulin by making more of that glycogen readily available for uptake of the cells. So it doesn't actually directly increase glucose uptake, but by down-regulating the increase of glycogen from the liver, it essentially works under the same notion. So this has been in clinical usage for quite some time. Now, as with any other PED, it wasn't long before bodybuilders started to understand and realize they could actually use this for performance benefit. So for bodybuilders, how can we apply this and what essentially can it look to do to aid performance and recovery? So just the same way as it's going to be helping out type 2 diabetics with, you know, the uptake of glycogen into the muscle, into the cells, bodybuilders can utilize it for the same effect. Um, so obviously in the off-season phase, if you're consuming a high amount of food, specifically carbohydrates, what we can sometimes see as a bodybuilder is that downregulation of either A, the insulinogenic response. So remember the hormone insulin being secreted from the pancreas to help shuttle those carbohydrates into the muscle cells or B, an actual resistance to that release of insulin. Okay, so we're still secreting the insulin from the pancreas, and this is most usually the, the more frequent case. The beta cells, which if we, act, if we think of the beta cells as almost the bodyguards or the bouncers who, who are allowing that insulin to come in, if they're starting to build up more resistance, the insulin is just bouncing, bouncing off. Um, so we're getting that, that inefficient ability to actually you know, uh, accept the insulin and allow that glycogen to go into the muscle. And then what we'll see as a bodybuilder is an increase in blood sugar and therefore an increase in ins insulin resistance. Now, why do we not want that? If we are trying to, you know, eat in a caloric surplus, we're trying to absorb a large amount of carbohydrates, we want to make sure that our body is actually digesting and absorbing those nutrients efficiently. Because it's one thing eating all the food, but it's another thing making sure that your body's actually putting that food in the right places. And obviously with carbohydrates, we want to make sure that, you know, the vast majority of that carbohydrate is being transported into the muscle cells, where we can utilize it for obviously resistance training. Um, so if we're getting a down regulation of that, it starts to make that process of consuming carbs inefficient and proteins, but mainly carbohydrates is, is the topic here. Um, so by consuming metformin, as we've already stated, with its help in terms of in the medical scene of improving sensitivity to insulin via reducing that glycogen outtake uh, uh, secretion from the liver, um, we can actually support that process of um, insulin sensitivity and uptaking glycogen into the muscle. Very, very similar to like a, say, say a diabetic would. So it's very, very good to utilize in an off-season phase where food intake is high. Um, in a cutting phase, it can still be utilized. Um, we would usually want to situate it at the beginning of a dieting phase for an athlete within that cutting phase. Now, the reason for that is as an athlete essentially improves their body composition and gets leaner and leaner towards a contest prep, as body composition improves, insulin sensitivity will improve. 
because obviously food intake, specifically carbohydrate intake is lower. So that's going to take some of the, the strain off the pancreas. It's going to take the strain off the beta cells. And what you will usually find is an athlete's insulin sensitivity will peak the closer they get to a contest prep for that reason. So it's not necessarily a drug that an athlete would want to keep in for the entirety of the prep. Um, so that's how it can be utilized in an off-season phase. That's how it can be utilized in a dieting phase. When it comes under the blanket of PED usage from athletes as well, specifically if you've got an athlete on human growth hormone or insulin itself, what you can often find is insulin sensitivity can actually begin to reduce within that athlete because of these other hormones being implemented. So metformin can actually be a really, really nice uh, drug to utilize alongside HGH and insulin to help to keep that insulin sensitivity whilst you're potentially you know, uh, uh, synthetically upregulating other pathways, which can downregulate it. So remember, when it comes to PED usage, it's not just about, you know, exploring one and maximizing that one pathway, but it's about utilizing different specific pathways in order to get the overall, you know, best effects that you, that you can, if you like. Now, as with anything, obviously the advantages are there, but it's going to come with its own ramifications. So what do we know about the ramifications or the side effects of metformin? Um, so firstly, appetite. It can be known to suppress appetite. And obviously in an off-season phase, it's not going to be advantageous. In a prep phase, this could actually be helpful to help stunt appetite. In an off-season phase, we'd usually want to make sure that we're utilizing it um, away from kind of the training window or away from the window whereby you're going to be eating the biggest bolus of your food intake if you're starting to notice a decrease in appetite. If you're not noticing any decrease in appetite, it doesn't really make a massive difference. Um, now, one of the other ramifications that we can often find with metformin usage um, is gut issues and gastrointestinal issues at the GI tract. So... You know, some people have associated it with issues with uh, uh, stool, so diarrhea, um, you know, with with uh, gut ache, uh, stomach ache and pains and, and things like that. And it, it can, in a very small handful of individuals, upset the gut floor or the gut microbiome. Um, however, there is some literature to suggest that metformin can actually improve the gut microbiome in some individuals as well. So it's like anything, individual usage, individual tolerance and dosaging um, is always going to be um, very important. Okay, so the take homes on this drug, so it was established in the early 1920s, it's been in clinical usage for a long duration, mainly for people with type 2 diabetes. Um, obviously, as with any uh, drug, it's not been long until bodybuilders have got their claws into it and realize we can actually use this to improve performance. Um, it down regulates glycogen uh, secretion from the liver um, and therefore due to that process actually increases the sensitivity to insulin and obviously carbohydrate consumption. It's obvious how that can be utilized for a bodybuilder in terms of improving, you know, uh, glucose uptake, improving, um, you know, that sensitivity to insulin and then obviously aid in your performance. There's no actual evidence and data that suggests that it increases you know, muscle building or protein synthesis, but obviously improving muscle glycogen uptake, therefore it's going to improve your training performance, therefore it's going to improve uh, your ability to build muscle. Um, ramifications, it can potentially suppress appetite um, and it can sometimes lead to gastrointestinal issues such as diarrhea, stomach cramps and things like that. Okay guys, so that's metformin. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop me a message and we'll speak soon.